Hello everyone. Today I have something experimental but very special thing to share with you. This time I have tried to replicate the ballpoint sketching style on IBS Pentex. Without further ado, let's check out which brushes we need for this method. The most important brush for this method would be the soft mapping pen. This is going to be the primary brush for sketching and shading. I actually tried using different brushes in that segment but I felt soft mapping pen worked the best for me. Then for adding the background color we have alcohol marker brush which kind of creates copic marker like effect. I think I should try make a portrait just using this alcohol brush. And next we have five lines. This is to give it a stylized look. I also tried the net brush that you can see there, but I liked five lines better. Now that we know which brushes we need to use, let's get started with the coloring. First, I changed the line art color to blue because I wanted the art to be in blue. So, if you want to keep it black and white, that is totally fine. Next up, we are going to start the shedding using soft mapping pen on a different layer. Before we start, let me show you one amazing trick. So you just need to increase the jitter hue of your brush to 25% and you will be able to see interesting colors happening. So this is going to be a very simple hatching technique. Make sure that you are keeping your lines straight for most of the time. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect but try to make it consistent. And the key to consistency is keeping your hand steady and moving your fingers or stylus as if you're using a real ballpoint pen. So those were the few little basic things you needed to know. Now I'm going to get into the real process. As you can see, this technique is pretty similar to the digital pencil shading technique I showed you before. Just the difference is the brush. The way we usually add mid-tones, highlights and shadows, we will do exactly same things but with a different painting style. If you find it difficult to switch between colors, what you can do is Paint the entire thing in grayscale and then add color to it. If you want to know how to easily create colorful portraits from grayscale, you can check out the video mentioned in the card above. I like to add color from the beginning because that way I have more control. But that's just my personal preference. So I added dark borders for the hair so that I do not spill the colors out when I'm going to shade it. You have to keep thinking that you are sketching using a ballpoint pen. And when using a pen, it's difficult to undo the result. So you have to be more or less precise with your strokes. Don't try to cheat with eraser. I won't say it's a cheating, but I'm just trying to say don't make it too convenient for you. Just think that you are actually making something traditionally. I am not telling you to abandon the undo tool or the eraser tool, but what I'm trying to say here is brainstorm try to make your brain work hard trust me with this and you will see the results 
So if you are not confident about your hatching technique, you can try to use the straight ruler to keep your lines straight. Still, you have to make sure that you have almost equal distance in between two strokes. But the thing is, it will look mechanic, not really organic. So I would recommend you to practice hatching first if you are not good at it and then try painting this way. Try to find simple shapes like box or circle to practice. And whenever you practice, make sure that you have a clear idea about the light source, the shadow and the reflected light. These three things are most important when you are adding color or shading to something. Notice how it's automatically creating different colors with every new stroke. It's happening because we have the 25% jitter hue turned on. I have chosen blue as my main color so you can see all the cold colors around it. If I wanted to go for a warm and cold balanced art or tried to make it more iridescent, I would have turned the jitter percentage to 50% or maybe 75. In that way there would be a combination of cold and warm colors at the same time. When you want to make a certain area darker than the other, you have to follow the hatching method once again over that certain area. A similar concept would be painting your wall and trying to make it brighter. So you have to keep doing the same thing over and over till you get the perfect dark shading. The reason behind not adding too much shading to the face or completing the hair color was to make it more stylized. I don't know about you but I think it kinda looks aesthetic to keep it empty that way. I used the 5 line brush for her shirt to give it a different look. Although I changed it later for too much mechanical looking issue, it's still a great brush for hatching. I randomly added those lines around the subject and also over the subject just for the aesthetic purposes. Similar to the 5 lines brushes before, I added alcohol marker mostly on the empty areas. I tried to create a watercolor kind of effect. This is not exactly similar but it looks nice. This ballpoint shading technique is something I really loved doing when I made traditional arts. But I never actually did it on a digital surface, so I guess it was about time. This way of coloring is more intense than usual painting because too many repeated strokes. But it's actually pretty satisfying when you are done with it. So I would say worth it. Finally, I did some finishing touches here and there and played around with colors and layers to finish it up.
So on the alcohol marker layer, I added some subtle glitch effect to create some interesting pattern. And that's it. That is our final product. It looks so pretty even if we didn't color everything. So sometimes less is more indeed. So I hope you enjoyed the process and got to know some important things regarding this method. I would love to know your feedbacks in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next week. Till then, take care.